561 reporting in service, starting mileage 8659, 8659. 4156, mileage 8659, 8659, reporting in service on the night watch. This is Don Reed, a police recorder. That was uh, Sergeant Ron Perkins just reporting Detective Unit 56 in service on the night watch. While you're with us tonight, all units in the vicinity and cars 50 and 51 southbound on Canyon Road from Overhill. Woman threatening citizens with butcher knife. Suspect described as wearing white coat, blue dress, red shoes. 30 to 35 years, 5 feet 9, 179 pounds, and has a cut over left eye. Cars 50 and 51. Handle this call, code two. We're not on any particular assignment at present, so we'll probably head into that area and help look for this possible assault suspect. But as I started to say, while you're riding with us tonight, remember, the people you hear are not actors. This is it. This is real. This is Night Watch. Night Watch, the actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors, there is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch, presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. And now we switch you to Detective Unit 5-6, already on assignment in the field, and to police recorder, Don Reed. Right now, it's uh, after midnight, and we've uh, spent the evening looking for the woman suspect that's been chasing citizens with a butcher knife. So far, we've checked out four different victims, and uh, fortunately, no one's been injured, but we've uh, certainly had some pretty scared people around. It's been sort of a game of uh, hide-and-seek. The suspect pops up from nowhere, threatens the victim, and then just sort of disappears into thin air. And then sort of turns up eight or ten blocks away in another locality. Throw we have... Five, six, come in. Five, six, go ahead. Throw one to five, six. The juvenile car is tied up. Are you clear to handle a call? Uh, five, six, Roger. We're down here looking for the woman with a knife. What have you got? Unit five, six, at 2209 Center Way... 2209 Center Way. See the man about child neglect. 5-6, uh, Roger. Well, we'll have to handle this call, child neglect. And uh, while we're rolling down there, just a couple of footnotes on the search for this woman armed with a knife. We have two radio cars and two detective units cruising the area. So far, no one's had any luck. But it's uh, just a question of time, however, if she stays in the same general location. Obviously, every effort is being made to take this woman into custody. That is, before someone really gets seriously hurt. Back to our present call. The juvenile car is on another assignment, and we're just rolling over to handle this call for them. We have that just that uh, brief bit of information to see the man regarding child neglect. We'll find out more about it. In fact, right about now, because the house should be right along here in the next block on the left-hand side. Working the spotlight now to pick out the curb numbers. Let's see, there's 27, 17, 13, 09. That's it. A large, rambling, old fashioned house. There's several entrances, apparently broken up into small apartments. Must be it. Here's a uh, young man looking through the blinds of the door. Come on in. Thank you. Small, two or three room apartment. And nervously lighting a cigarette. Well, my wife lives here. I live elsewhere. This is my boy. Over in the corner. Come on in. A little boy, five or six. Blue pajamas. Are you? Wide eyed. 
Hi. Yes. What's your name? Mine's Perkins. Perkins? And who's this? And... My name's Reed. Reed. How are you, young fella? Five. How old are you, son? Five. Five, huh? Well, anyway, that, um... I called up, um, this after... Well, this evening about... About seven. And, um, my boy says that, um, my wife wasn't home, that she'd gone to the doctor. So anyway, that I called up the doctor, and, um... He um, wasn't there, of course, and it was just the switchboard. So anyway, that um, I call up a hospital, which is in Inglewood, and um, ask if there was a patient there by my wife's name. She wasn't there. So anyway, I got worried and came down here, and uh, Mom was nowhere around, was she? Mm-mm, she wasn't anywhere. She wasn't anywhere. The boy was by himself? By himself. Mm-hmm. What time did your mommy leave the house, son? Up in the afternoon, after work. Was it still light outside? Mm-hmm. And where did she say she was going? To the doctor. The doctor? Well, that's been about probably six or seven hours anyway. Has she done this before? That I don't know. I mean, uh, my wife and I are separated. Mm-hmm. She has custody of the child, is she it? She has custody of the child. And uh, if my wife is sick, like he said that he did, that she did go to the doctor, there should have been some means, to, you know, to... The little fellow is pulling at my shirt sleeve here, pointing to something over there in the corner. Anyway. What do we got over here, young fellow? What he got? Well, I'll be darned. <clears throat> What is that? Baby guinea pig and the mother guinea pig. About two inches long. Well, that's the cutest thing I've seen. Is that the mama? Yeah. Well, isn't she cute? Gee, she certainly is pretty. Let's go back and talk to the father again. Well, um, can you take care of the boy here until your wife returns? I will, under the circumstances, yes. Because the only alternative we would have would be to take the boy down to juvenile hall in the yeah, uh, dependence ward. That. But uh, we, we can't leave him alone. The thing we'd like to do, if you could uh, stay here with him until she returns, and when she returns, boy, give us a call. Right. And uh, we can come down and see what the situation was and why she uh, why she left him alone. In the meantime, just to be on the, on the safe side, we will go ahead and check... Uh, with our, our own department and the other departments surrounding us, just to be sure that she hasn't been involved in an accident or anything has happened to her. Well, I'd appreciate that, too. Does she have a car? No. Okay, sir. Well, uh, we'll check into it, and then in the meantime, why, if she does come home, she'll give us a call right away. Okay? Good deal. You bet. Good night. Good night. Cigarette time? Yeah, thanks. Got a match? Yeah. Well, where do we go from here? Not very far, I don't think. Did you, uh, did you see that picture of the uh, blonde woman and the uh, mantelpiece in there? No, I didn't get much of a look at it. Well, right behind you over there, sitting in that car, is a blonde woman. Might be the mother. Let's uh, check it out. Okay. Heading for the car. There's a young couple in the front seat, straightening up. Just a little bit uneasy at our approach. Police officers, we talk to you a minute. Step out of the car a minute, please, ma'am. Young woman uh, getting out. Tiny, attractive, worried. Who, who did you leave your boy with? The lady that keeps care of you. Where is she? Well, she's supposed to be home. Is that in the other unit of this building? Or is yeah, there... right there. It's all in one building. I wonder why the boy is alone in the house. Well, she brings him over and puts him to bed. Well, let's go inside and see what all the trouble is. As in all family problems, there's always two sides. Let's see if we can square this away. Let's go ahead and talk to the husband first. Your wife is outside, uh... Outside now, she said that she left the boy with the uh, woman next door. Mm -hmm. What's the call, please? What? 
say that again. I said, what you call the police for? I didn't call no police. Who did? He's a detective. <laughs> There's a difference. Well, what for? I'd get home. My boyfriend brought me home. Okay. Where, where were you? I was at the doctor. A quarter to twelve? I went out for something to eat after I got through with the doctor. A quarter to twelve? This is the first time I've been out this week. I don't care if it's been the first night or first day, first time this week or not. I just want to know where you've been. It's none of your business, right? It is my you business. Are. It's starting to be my business. Well, it isn't any of your business. And I think with, that if you would pay uh, this child support only four months behind, how long? Four months. Well, you're exaggerating. I am yeah. behind, but not four months. And I've tried to be very fair about it. And then to do something like this. Where were you? It's none of your business where I was. And were you at the doctor? I was at the doctor. What doctor? Right there's the slip. What doctor? It's none of your business, what doctor? This is a nursing home for mother and child. And she's here 24 hours a day. And since it is all on one floor, and her bedroom is right next door to mine, she could hear her if he cried or anything, and he sleeps better in his own bed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing we're interested in, just make sure that the child has proper supervision at all times. She was a life, this is a licensed home for mother and children. I'm still mad. Well, you can get just as mad as you want to. I don't ask where you go and what you no, do. No, I mean, but so you... when it's alone, that, that's when I... I told you that I was one. behind. Yeah. Well, that's it. Well, if everything's okay, we're just we're interested in the child. If the child's okay, that's yeah. the part that we're most interested in. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Thank All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. They sure seem like nice people. Shame they can't get along. Yeah, but it's a little fellow that's in a spot on a deal like this. Yeah. Uh, five, six to one, uh, clear on the child neglect case. Everything under control. Control under five, six. Car parked over there by that woman's dress shop. Yeah. I was there earlier. Have a look at it. Sometimes you act like a policeman. <laughs> yeah, there's a car stuff. It's stopped over there, all right. Let's swing over to that car and have a look. You gotta wait for a little traffic to get by. Now we're okay.
Oh, there's one now, Sergeant. Taxi? Taxi. I never could whistle. How many times the way am I? Over and stop I guess he spotted us anyway. He's going down the corner and turning around. In fact, oh, we don't want you out here hurting yourself or hurting somebody else. Yes. By golly, you guys are sure nice to me. I, I, I really appreciate that, that people can be so, you know, officers can be... Real, real wonderful, the guys like me. Because I, I don't feel that I'm trying to do anything wrong. But I am. The cab pulling up. I am. I mean, I have to do a couple of good stuff. There you go. Well, good deed for the night. Five six, uh, go ahead. Control one to five six. We've been trying to reach you. Unit five or four has picked up the woman in the knife assault and are en route to the station with the subject and request you meet them there. Uh, Roger, we'll go right in. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. And now we switch you back to Detective Unit 5-6 somewhere in the field and police recorder Don Reed. Approaching the station. After talking to some of the victims, there's a natural curiosity to see the suspect that was chasing citizens with a butcher knife. Sort of uh, find out what's going on. Each one of the victims gave the same description of the suspect. It also stated that she was carrying one approximately a 10-inch butcher knife. It also has a cut over the left eye. All we know now is that she left some mighty frightened people scattered around. That's for sure. Into the station. There's a hassle going on in the interrogation room. Here's the picture. A woman wearing a white coat covered with dirt. Wound over left eye. A few hours old. Officer is trying to bring her under control. Get her into a chair. She's kicking, swinging from all angles. Hey, let me slow down a minute. Relax a minute. What We're trying to help you. In the... My eyes. I can't see. You can see. Her. see. I can't see. Well, what happened? Tell us what happened. Examining her purse for identity. Keep it that way. You can act, decent, act decently, or we'll treat you decently. Isn't that fair enough? Just do it. Okay, you act decently. If I catch one of the outside, I'll kill you. Keep it. Like that, boy. Like it. In the purse? Nothing but little bits of cardboard. Sergeant Perkins and the doctor are going on the hall. She, I think she should be. She should have psychiatric observation. God, I don't know. She could be just drunk, but uh, she sure hangs up all squirrely for just a drunk. 
this business of the little pieces of the cardboard and stuff. That may be some, uh, some fetish, you know, some screwball fetish. She may think these are thousand dollar bills or something like that. Well, the best thing for us is to take her down to County Cycle. Yeah, put her down there. Right. She's really got to be, uh, where you can restrain her if necessary. <coughs> well, it may not be necessary, but put her on the stretcher and she can be strapped in the stretcher. Right. She, uh, can she be transported in a police car or she can use the ambulance? Well, when you were filming those guys, I once uh, spent a few hours sewing up a gal's leg that uh, was similar to this that they took in that police car. As they took her out, she kicked out the windshield with her foot. That's good enough for us. You're the doctor. Johnny, do you want to call California Ambulance? Yeah. Have some send an ambulance down, we'll transport an ambulance. Back to the woman. They murdered somebody? Murdered. Oh, I'm all I mean, that man, I killed someone. Hallucinations. Think she killed someone. I killed something in life. I was going to kill him when I got on the street. Put that down, too. Put that down. You want to tell us what happened? I told you what happened. Oh, you did. You were yelling and screaming. I couldn't understand you. You're a liar! I told you what happened. You're a liar! Kicked over the desk, dug a high heel into the sergeant. <laughs> Trying to pin her arms down before someone really gets hurt. Okay, yeah. Let's go over here. Yeah, yeah. Restraining straps are out, being put on the suspect. Keep her from injuring herself or anyone else. Oh, God. Now relax. You want to tell us what happened? You want to tell us what happened? I don't know. I didn't understand you were swearing. She keeps saying she told us. So far, she hasn't said anything. All we know is from the field report. She was running down the street, threatening citizens with a butcher knife. How old are you? Huh? Doctor taking over. Twenty-nine. You're not nine years old, are you? Or you just act like that. Doctor trying to get some information for his report. Not having any more luck than we did. I'm 29 years old. Why do I think if I can do it, I'll kill you? Why do I do it? Woman trying to... Woman trying to get the notebook from his hand. Let me alone. Just a minute. I've got to find out a couple of things. I want to go home and go to bed. Why do you tell me? Maybe we won't have to send you over to the... Uh, you don't have to send me. Los Angeles County Psychopathic Unit. You know where that you is? You don't have to send me a psychopathic unit or anywhere. Well, I know I don't have to. Because but... I'm not a psychopathic owner. No. I have experiments <laughs> because you brought me here. I don't want to be here because I'm not going <laughs> there. Why don't you give me a loser? Ambulance just pulled up. Well, uh, do you think we could turn you into the if uh, you could try to kick us with your... No. <laughs> Wheeling in the stretcher. <laughs> Up alongside the chair where she's sitting. Restraining straps still on. Placing her on the stretcher. Thank you. She has much relief. <laughs> 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 Moving out the door. <laughs> yeah, I got the stretcher. Out on the street.
shoplifting their patient into the ambulance. Sure, you done? Well, I felt it, if that's what you mean. Pretty hard to control your temper, isn't it? Well, she isn't responsible. I don't know who is, but she isn't. What you have just heard is real. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. For their disposition, we return you to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's first case revealed the child was not actually neglected, although the original circumstance did appear so. The Juvenile Bureau followed up, but found no reason for a complaint. The final investigation involving the woman threatening citizens with a knife is the type of event thoroughly disliked by every law enforcement officer. It was necessary to use restraining straps to prevent the subject from injuring herself or the officers. She was immediately transported to the Los Angeles County Hospital Psychiatric Unit for treatment. Although at the time of her commitment, it appeared long months of treatment would be necessary to restore any semblance of normalcy. However, this was not the case. As soon as this woman shook off the effects of alcohol in her system, she became rational in a matter of hours. Today, she is home with her family, steadily employed, and attending meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous. The case was heard tonight with the woman's knowledge and approval, in the hopes that this event would give you a real insight to the many difficult problems and decisions your police officers must face on their tour of duty. This is one of the reasons for bringing you the actual recorded happenings on the Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the -the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hedlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and described in the field by police recorder Don Reed.